table below shows the speed to the nearest kilometers per hour of 90 vehicles that pass a checkpoint. Alright, so we have the speed going down here, we have the frequency, and then we have our cumulative frequency there. So, I guess we had to finish off that table. Oh no, let's do some stuff here first. So, for the... So, for the class interval 20 to 39, that's here. As written in the table above, complete the following sentences. So we're just looking at that class. Um, okay. The upper class limit is... So the upper class limit is going to be 39. They said upper class limit, not upper class boundary. If it was boundary, well, it would be 39.5 if it was boundary. But it's not boundary, it's limit. So you could go in your textbook and check the difference between boundaries and limit, or you can just listen to me right now. Um, the boundary is like you go between the limits. You notice know, so we have 39 and 40. So yeah, 39 plus 40 divided by 2, 39.5. That would be the boundary. That would be like the exact in between. And there's a reason for that because values like 39.4 are included in this table. So 39.4 would have to go like in here in that class. Um, Alright, so yeah, the boundaries is the excessive one. The boundaries is like, focus here. Boundary would be like, not 20, 19.5 and 39.5. So that, those are like the class boundaries or whatever. Upper boundary, lower boundary, upper boundary, lower boundary. And the limits would be what we're seeing here. 39, 29. Alright, back to the question. Alright, the class width is is 40 now how did i get 40 to get the class which you need to take away the boundaries so let me just parallel we can 39.5 take away 90 hold up hold up well by now you'd realize yeah by now you'd realize that it's not really um 40 is 20 uh subscriber by the name of Gabby Fabi just asked me is in the class with 20 yes it really is 20 I made a mistake when I was I don't know what's going on with me so anyway in this video that I see 40 it should be 20 I just have to take it down and paint this little snippet 20 Nine. and watch how hard I'm going now with this 40 in this video I just check it to see if you're paying attention they go back to the video 40 is like as far as they can go straight up to their boundaries so part 3, 16 vehicles pass the checkpoint at no more than... Alright, so this is like the boundary we're talking about. What is like the boundary of this class? 16, by the way, is 5 plus 11 makes 16. So we reach 16 in this frequency. So at no more than the boundary here, which is not 39, but 39.5. We could use values all the way up to just before 39.5. So at no more than 39.5 is the answer they are looking for. Now, if you want to be a little technical, something a little fishy with that answer, right? And no 39.5 is the answer they're looking for. But no more than means you could actually include the value 39.5. But the value 39.5 actually belongs to the next class. Uh, but let me just put that and get me mark and move on. So part B, complete the table shown above by inserting the missing values for the cumulative frequency column. There's a missing column. In the table, let's go back to the table right here. We want those values that go there. All right, so if you never see cumulative frequency before, take in some knowledge. This is how it works. So 5 goes there. Now 5 plus 11 goes here. Now 16 plus 26, which is 42. That will go here. You see the pattern? And 42 plus this new number that goes here. That will carry me quickly up to 79. So it jumps it jumps a lot in the middle and then it slows back down. So let me just get rid of all these excessive things and put in the values. So what are we looking at? What are we looking at? We're looking at a 42 and 90. So the table is complete. We have just collected two marks for that section for just add, adding up some stuff. All right, next part. And the grid provided. So there's a grid, which is like graph, graph paper thing. So I use a scale of 2 centimeters to represent 20 kilometers per hour on the x-axis. Alright, so they give you a scale for both the x and y axis. So um, if they give you a scale, use the scale, don't do anything fancy. Alright, so we have to draw a cumulative frequency curve. 
And I know a lot of people have been asking me to do cumulative frequency curves, so the moment has arrived. Alright, so cumulative frequency curve time. Here's a graph of it. There we see the graph. I'm putting in the X values. I'm putting in the Y values according to scale. After I do that, I'll want to label my axes one time. Oh no, I went and plot the points. Let's stop there. Let's go back. I want to show you something with these points. I don't know if you can see it from there, but this coordinate is 19.55. Graph is a little small right now, but this is 19.55. That's the coordinate. 19.5 on the X, 5 on the Y. Why is it 19.5 and 5? This is the most important part. This is the most important part of the video. So let's go back to the first page. Right, so we're back on the first page. I want you to look at the first column. In the first column, we're using 19.5 from the upper boundary. That's how cumulative frequency works. So this is the x-axis, and the y-axis takes the values from here. So this coordinate is going to be 19.5.5, comma, 5 on the y. What is the next coordinate going to be? It's going to be the upper boundary, 39.5, 16, right? So, you can expect a coordinate of 39.5, come on, behave yourself, 39.5, 16 <clears throat> on the graph, and so on. You're using the upper boundaries and you're using these as your y-axis. So, the number one thing to take away from this video is how to plot the cumulative frequency curve. Use the upper boundary and the values on the cumulative frequency. Alright, um, let's take all these things. Alright, so after you've plotted the point, all that remains is to draw a curve. Your cumulative frequency curve will always come out looking like a weird S, an S style there, like this. If you don't get that kind of curve for your cumulative frequency, ask them for an next graph paper because you do nonsense. Alright, so when you join up the point, you'll get the S. Don't forget to label your axes. Put a title as well. Um, after you put a title, you normally put a scale somewhere here. But they already give you the scale, so it's not that necessary, right? Um, and I think that's it for this graph. So there was one more part to this question. On your graph, draw reference lines to estimate the speed at which no more than 50% of the vehicles drove as they pass the checkpoint. So this is always asked in cumulative frequency after you draw the graph. They'll ask you to draw some kind of reference line coming across and read off something. Mostly it will be at 50% which is like the second quartile, or sometimes it will be at the lower quartile, which is 25%, or at the upper quartile, which is 75%. So you just need to find 50% of the values, or 25% of the values, or 75% of the values. Let me show you what I do. So what I do is work out 50% of the total values. Now, it's the total value is of the cumulative frequency is 90. It's usually 100, but it's 90 now. So I guess that's the big trick in this exam. So 50 over 100 times 90, 90, you know that is equal to 45. So you're coming across from 45 now, bam. You see that orange line there? I hope you can see it. That's my little dotted line scenes now. And then you're coming down from wherever it hits the graph, bam. Um, so that is going to be the value that you're reading off, 61. As simple as that. So I think that was the entire question there. So all that's left for you to do is to come in and write 61 kilometers per hour, hour, all right, I forget how to write, 61 kilometers per hour, and that would be it, you collect 11 marks. Now, questions that we're not run for 11 marks in this exam, you might run for 10 marks or 9 marks, actually, but I really hope this little example could help you do any question with cumulative frequency and be able to get it out. So look out for the next stats video shortly. I'll try to upload all in the space of 24 hours so we can get onto some other things like coordinate geometry. And I see the comments on transformations. I'm going to do transformations as well.